box. Mesh. Dante's Boxer Nation, what's going on, guys? So recently, Jamel Charlo, he just said that Canelo Alvarez is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And the first thing I want to say is, in response to that, I agree with him. He is definitely pound for pound the best fighter in the world against European Caucasian fighters. I mean, I give it to him, man. Canelo Alvarez is the European assassin. There's no doubt about it. Now, before I really unpack everything that Jamel Charlo said, or the one thing that he said about Canelo Alvarez, I want to stick with this for a second. Just imagine if you had some track star, right? He went to the Olympics, right? And just imagine if he had the type of power to where once he got on that track and he seen who he had to race against, he starts saying, oh, no, no, hell no. That Jamaican right there, I don't want to race him. Y'all take him out right now. I want those two black guys from America removed, and I want that one black guy from Canada removed. Now I'm ready to race, y'all. So once this man gets everything that he wants, and everyone he wants is removed, they start the race, and this man, he smokes everybody. I mean, he got everybody eating his dust. He wins the race easy. Now, would you say that that man is the fastest man in the world? Absolutely not, right? This is exactly what Canelo Alvarez is doing. He's choosing who he wants to race against, but he's purposely removing the fastest guys on the track. Oh, sure, he keeps the guy from Germany. Oh, sure, he keeps the guy from Poland. He's got no problem racing a guy from Bulgaria. You know why? Because these slower guys makes Canelo Alvarez look like he's the fastest man in the world. I mean, I want to make this very clear. The last time we had an undisputed fighter that was considered pound for pound the best fighter in the world, it was Floyd Mayweather. And then it was Andre Ward. But by the time Andre Ward became pound for pound, there was so much resentment because the racist fans, they had to endure Floyd Mayweather dominating the sport for so long, they wanted that to all change. So then when Andre Ward became pound for pound the best fighter in the world, even though the majority of people agreed that he was, but that's when you started to see a shift. This is when old media started desperately looking for someone who had the complexion for the protection to be considered number one. And this is when they started to disrespect Andre Ward by saying that this new fighter that nobody had really heard of by the name of Chocolatito Gonzalez, he was actually pound for pound. This is the agenda that they started to push, old media. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about Chocolatito Gonzalez, but let's go back to when Floyd Mayweather was pound for pound. This is the point that I want to make. Look, if it makes any of you guys feel better to say that Canelo Alvarez is pound for pound, the best fighter in the world, you can knock yourself out and say it. But I'm telling you right now, even if you did say that he's pound for pound the best fighter in the world, you would have to admit Canelo Alvarez is the only fighter that has ever been called pound for pound the best fighter in the world that is openly telling you he doesn't want to fight Mexicans. He's openly not fighting undefeated black champions or mandatories. And he specializes in fighting Caucasian European fighters. In the last interview that Canelo did with Brian Custer, Brian was asking questions that old media usually never ask. They never really mention Demetrius Andrade or Charlo's name. Even DeZone, who actually works with Demetrius Andrade, Chris Mannix, he never, whenever he interviews Canelo Alvarez, he will ask Canelo Alvarez about all of the European Caucasian fighters. Like, what about you fighting Golovkin again? What do you think about Golovkin? What do you think about Billy Joe Saunders? I remember one time Chris Mannix, he was interviewing Gennady Golovkin after a fight. And Demetrius Andrade, he tried to jump into the ring, which is really traditional. It's pretty normal in the sport of boxing to promote a big fight. Just like Shane Mosley jumped into the ring to challenge Floyd Mayweather. 
Just like when Tyson Fury jumped into the ring after a Deontay Wilder fight and they went face to face. Or even when Anthony Joshua was at his way in to fight Pavekin and Big Baby Miller showed up and they had a face to face to promote their next fight. Well, Andre tried to do this on the actual network that he fights for and they blocked him. And once again, I got to say it again, Chris Mannix was looking at all of this unfold and never did he even mention Andre's name as a possible opponent for Gennady Golovkin. Sure, he mentioned Canelo's name, but he made sure he didn't say Charlo or Andre's name. And this is the same thing that Chris Mannix does with Canelo Alvarez. He makes sure not to mention Charlo or Andre, but if Andre is fighting, then he'll say, I think you against Charlo would be a great fight. Matter of fact, he just said after Andre's last fight, he said, I think that's like one of the biggest fights of the year. So you think that this is one of the biggest fights of the year, but you don't think it's one of the biggest fights of the year if Andre is fighting Golovkin or he's fighting against Canelo Alvarez. Considering the fact that Andre and Charlo have been calling out Golovkin for six years, that's how long that fight has been marinating. Oh, but you don't think that that's a big fight, right? We know what time it is, man. I keep telling you guys, this is the Mayweather effect. They do not want to see another Mayweather on the top of the sport. And when I say another Mayweather, all that means is someone who shares his skin complexion. They want to see a Mayweather with the complexion for the protection. So when they see Demetrius Andre, when they see Charlo, they're like, uh-uh, we ain't about to have this happen again. Not on my watch. I'm not even going to mention your name. It's like old media, they pretty much said, look, man, as long as you avoid these dangerous black fighters, we can call you the best fighter in the world. And this is exactly what they're doing with Canelo Alvarez right now. Old media and the Canelo Alvarez fans, they would rather Canelo fight Abney Yodiram than fight Jamal Charlo. They would rather Canelo fight Rocky Fielding than fight Demetrius Andrade. So they can keep telling themselves that Canelo Alvarez is the fastest man in the world. Now let's go ahead and talk about Jamal Charlo. Now guys, just in case you haven't been paying attention to what really goes on in the sport of boxing, did you guys know that coincidentally, Whenever a black fighter starts to call out a popular non-black fighter, that's when he starts receiving all type of hate. That's when all of a sudden he becomes a bum. That's when all of a sudden these fans, these non-black fans start asking, who is he fought? He doesn't deserve to fight so-and-so. You know, it's really sad when if you were to hear two people talking about boxing and you didn't know who they were talking about, and you just heard one person say, who is that guy fought? You already know he's going to be talking about a black fighter, right? So these fans don't have a problem with them until they start calling out fighters that these fans actually like. Why? Because obviously they feel that that black fighter is a threat to one of their favorite fighters. This is exactly what happened when Jamel and Jamal started to call out Canelo Alvarez and Demetrius Andre. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but even with Jamel saying that Canelo is pound for pound the best now, Jamel Charlo was aggressively calling out Canelo Alvarez at 154 along with his brother. And like I said, these Canelo Alvarez fans, they despise Jamel and Jamal when they wanted to fight Canelo Alvarez. But the funny thing is, by way of contrast, when David Benavidez started to aggressively respond to Jamal Charlo and he said he really wanted to fight, black fans were celebrating that David Benavidez was willing to fight Jamal Charlo. In fact, black fans in my comment section, they were filling it up saying, man, I'm now a big David Benavidez fan because he's got heart, he's willing to fight Jamal Charlo, he's calling out Jamal Charlo, he's calling his bluff. These were the type of comments that we seen. I didn't see one single black fan 
saying, oh man, David Benavidez is a bum. Who is he fought? He doesn't deserve to fight Jamal Charlo, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't see one comment like that. And that right there is what you call a boxing fan. Those people that start hating on Charlo for doing what he's supposed to do, hating on Andre for doing what he's supposed to do, which is go after the best fighters, those are what you call race fans. They don't even have enough confidence in their own favorite fighter to beat the guy that's calling their favorite fighter out. You see, when it comes to Jamel and a lot of these black fighters, the truth is they don't pay attention or understand racial double standards that exist in the sport of boxing. A lot of them think, oh man, all I have to do is win impressively, get some knockouts, and everybody is going to love me. This is exactly what Keith Thurman used to think. I remember Keith, he used to diss Floyd Mayweather all the time, and you could tell he thought dissing Floyd Mayweather was going to get him a whole lot of points from the fans. He used to always say stuff like, yeah, man, I get knockouts. See, I'm not boring like Floyd Mayweather, et cetera, et cetera. Man, he thought that people was eating that up, and all of a sudden, he was going to be the fan's favorite. And I remember this like it was yesterday because I was there covering the fight. Keith Thurman was at the weigh-in to fight against Robert the Ghost Guerrero out in Las Vegas. And man, I remember when Keith Thurman, he stood on the scale. It was like a, a crowd, you know, majority Mexican, and they just rained booze on him. And I will never forget the look of shock in Keith Thurman's face. He could not believe they were booing him. He didn't understand what was going on. Once again, he's not believing the racial double standards that exist, right? He's thinking, oh, man, you know, I'm getting knockouts and, hey, they hate Floyd. They're not going to hate me. He was getting knockouts and he was still getting booed. I don't know if he thought the light skin, the, the ice tea skin complexion was going to save him or whatever. But he found out that when it came to him fighting against a Mexican fighter, he was just as black as the darkest black man. That's how they seen him. And it's funny I mentioned Floyd Mayweather because Keith Thurman, he thought he was going to get some points from these non-black fans by hating and dissing Floyd Mayweather. And Jamel Charlo recently, he thinks the same thing, which don't get me wrong. You will get some kind of points for dissing Floyd Mayweather. But there is a distinction from liking something that someone said and liking the actual person. When you as a fan genuinely like the person, you probably don't care what he says. If it's good or bad, you're still going to like him. You don't care what he does because that's what fans do with Canelo. Canelo can say whatever he wants. They don't care. They're going to defend it. That's when you like someone. But once again, going back to Keith Thurman, when he starts dissing Floyd Mayweather, that's when these same fans only like what the person said. And see, Jamel, he understands this. He's thinking once again the way Keith Thurman was thinking before. Jamel, he found out a couple weeks back. You remember when Jamel Charlo, when he got mad at his brother and it got personal and he started saying stuff like Jamal is ducking Canelo Alvarez. He's seen the way the Canelo Alvarez fans reacted. They love that. So Jamel Charlo, he started thinking a lot of these racist fans Oh, wow, they really starting to like me because I said something about my brother that they really wanted to hear. So once he got a taste of that, then later on, you know, because the whole thing is with him obviously being Jamal's twin brother, they were completely trashing Jamal because once again, Jamal, he's the one that wants to fight Canelo Alvarez. So they were completely trashing him. So when he wasn't live on Instagram, sometimes Jamal will go live. And just because he's associated with his brother, they would start trying to hate on him. And I remember Jamel, he was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, man. That's my brother. That ain't got nothing to do with me. He was trying to, he was trying to distance himself from his brother. He was basically saying, I like Canelo and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he was getting a lot of points from that. And he's seen it. And that's when he said, wait a minute. They, they really like this, me saying good stuff about Canelo Alvarez. I'm not getting no more racist comments in my comment section. You know, I don't see too much hate. This is really working. So that's when he actually took it to another level 
And then more recently, he said Canelo Alvarez is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Once again, it makes sense, especially when you're on the coincidental list for you to say something like this. When you are used to fans constantly flooding your comment section with hate, with personal stuff. When you start to feel, you know it's really bad, when you start to feel like you did something wrong because you've been calling out Canelo Alvarez. This is how it got with Jamal Charlo. You know, Jamal, when he first moved up to 160, he used to call out Canelo a lot. But when he seen the backlash he was getting from the Canelo Alvarez fans, that's when he started to pump his brakes. That's when he didn't feel comfortable calling out Canelo Alvarez's name anymore. And it's funny I mentioned this because in that same piece where Jamel was saying that Canelo is pound for pound the best fighter in the world, he was also saying, look, man, I'm not trying to fight Canelo. I'm not trying to fight Canelo at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm at 154. And once again, why would he say something like that? You get points from the fans, the Canelo fans. That's what the Canelo fans want to hear. They want to hear you say, oh, I, you guys don't have to worry about me because that's pretty much what Jamel was saying. Listen, I know you don't want me and my brother to fight Canelo. I got good news for you. I'm not trying to fight him, right? And that's making these Canelo Alvarez fans happy. But once again, you start calling him out, then all of a sudden you're back to being a bum. Who did you fight? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you guys remember when PBC announced all the fights that they were going to have? In my comment section, there were tons of Canelo fans that was completely trashing the Jamel Charlo fight, which is a really, really good fight because it's a unification, but it's, a, it's not a unification. It's for undisputed, I should say. It is a unification, but it's truly for the undisputed title. Unlike Teofimo just saying he's undisputed. Jamel is really fighting for that title. And they were completely trashing Jamel Charlo, just like they were trashing the whole schedule. But wait, as soon as Jamel Charlo, he says that Canelo is pound for pound the best fight in the world. Once again, it goes back to I like what you say until you say something else that I don't like. This is the pressure that's on black fighters when they're on social media and they're trying to get acceptance. They're trying to find the right things to say to be accepted. That's why it doesn't surprise me when all these black fighters are dealing with so much hate and then they come out and say, hey man, Canelo Alvarez is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. It doesn't surprise me. Black fighters have always been doing this. Once again, when... Andre Ward was clearly pound for pound the best fighter in the world. All of a sudden, old media said, move over, Andre Ward. Now, Chocolatito Gonzalez is number one, the best fighter in the world. And guess what? You had fighters like Floyd Mayweather. He was saying that Roman Gonzalez was the best fighter in the world. Roy Jones, me and Roy, we had a debate about this. He was saying that Chocolatito Gonzalez is pound for pound the best fight in the world. Why? Because everywhere you turn, old media was saying this. Old media could have said anybody was pound for pound the best fight in the world. And you would have had a lot of people just saying it because that's the popular choice. So this is why Jamel and other black people will say Canelo Alvarez is the best fight in the world. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say there's no black person that doesn't believe it. But for sure, this is the reason why Jamel is saying it, just going off of his pattern. But once again, for me, it doesn't matter who says it. Because the facts are irrefutable. Once again, if you want to say he's pound for pound the best fight in the world, you would have to admit Canelo is the first to become a star and be considered pound for pound by anyone by basically losing the most important fight of his career, which was against Floyd Mayweather. He would be the first pound for pound champion to only fight white Caucasian European fighters. And keep in mind, when I say he's not fighting against 
undefeated black fighters. I always say undefeated black champions or mandatories, and you always got someone saying, hey man, well he fought James Kirkland, he fought Danny Jacobs, this is... But we're obviously talking about black fighters that haven't already been knocked out, still are undefeated, have been calling Canelo out for years and years. Fighters that were his mandatory, other champions in his division, I told you guys Demetrius Andrade has been chasing. Demetrius and Charlo have been chasing Canelo Alvarez since they were all at 154. But did you guys know that Canelo was actually Demetrius Andrade's mandatory? And Canelo pulled the same move that Ryan Garcia and Jaime Munguia did? Ryan was Devin Haney's mandatory. He basically vac vacated his spot to fight Javier Futuna in a title eliminator fight, which he obviously pulled out of that fight. Jaime Munguia, he's the mandatory for Andre and Charlo's belt. And he decided to go after either Golovkin or Majest Seleski, who he's fighting next. This is what Canelo Alvarez did at 154, guys. He was Andre's mandatory. And, and Andre was calling Canelo Alvarez a bitch and once again, the champion was calling out the challenger. And the challenger didn't want the fight. But then as soon as Andre got stripped of his title, then Canelo, he hurried up and he fought Liam Smith for Andre's belt, basically. And this is the guy that you want to call pound for pound? It's not adding up. It's not making sense. Canelo Alvarez doesn't have one single signature win on his career where he won with no controversy. His biggest fights all ended up either in controversy or it ended up in a loss. He lost to Floyd Mayweather. Most people think he lost to Lara. The Austin Trout fight, a lot of people thought that fight could have gone either way. And both of the Golovkin fights ended in controversy. Some people say Golovkin won them both. Some people say he won the last one. Some people say he won the first one. But the bottom line is Canelo has not one single signature win over an A-level opponent. So I got a lot more to say on this topic, but I'm getting a little tired. It's real late out here. So I'm going to wrap this video up. But I will say this, though. There's no doubt about it. Canelo Alvarez, he has a lot of talent. He still has the potential to really be a pound-for-pound -pound fighter, but he has to take the risk, and I don't know if he's willing to take those type of risks. That means getting in the ring with the best fighters in whatever division he campaigns at. For the last two years, Canelo Alvarez was at 160. He refused to fight the top guys at 160. Now he's at 168, which is a complete weak division, at least for now. It's a very weak division. The most dangerous opponent in that division is the one guy that Canelo says he doesn't want to fight, and that's David Benavidez. He's fighting against Billy Joe Saunders this weekend, and the cards are really stacked against BJ Saunders now, even more than they were before. For those of you guys who don't know, the WBC increased the levels of clenbuterol that you can have in your system. For those of you guys who don't know, that's a PED that Canelo tested positive for in the past and he was suspended for it. When he got suspended for it, the WBC president, he defended Canelo Alvarez and he increased the levels of clenbuterol because of the claims of contaminated meat in Mexico. So now Canelo Alvarez, he can take clenbuterol comfortably. Then you have the recent news of Canelo deciding at the very last minute that he wants the ring to be smaller, a lot smaller. 18 feet, which is supposed to be the size of an amateur ring. According to Saunders and his father, they had already agreed way before the week of the fight that it was going to be a 24-foot ring. Now, all of a sudden, at the last minute, Canelo wants it to be an 18-foot ring. So Canelo has all of the advantages. Not to mention, BJ also having to worry about the judges. So it's going to be a hell of an uphill battle for European Billy Joe Saunders. We'll see how it plays out. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.
Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. Hello, my name is Dominic. Um, I just got my procedure done here at Scalp Carolinas. Um, I was recommended by Dante's Boxing Nation and uh, it's for real, you know. Here's the, uh, here's the results. Uh, the brother out here, Brother Enoch, is real. And um, it's a very, very, very good recommendation. I recommend it. Um, four hours, you in, you out, and it's the rest of your life. So um, invest in the rest of your life. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man, Scalp Carolinas, on Instagram. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram. An important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Basil Flux and Basil Flux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaque Out. Plaque Out is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins and prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out.